Okay, first and foremost is all honor, praises, and glory unto the Father who is the highest, Yahweh. Uh, give honor unto the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Every time that I decide to do a lesson, all honor goes unto them. Um, recognizing that the Father is the one true Lord. Um, this particular video is assessing how the Genesis Israelites were in full rebuke of a blasphemous Christian panel who continued to not give all honor, praise, and glory unto the living God, unto the only true God, as pointed out through Christ's own ministry in efforts to continue pushing, pushing private interpretations, um, pointing to a God that did not make it him self known unto the Israelites. Um, and I'll just continue to dissect it. Now in this video, the topic was, is God a racist? Now, granted that particular topic is going to be an attention grabber. That's why it was labeled as such because no one can possibly fathom that the Lord, the highest is that, um, but the premise was made known according to the definition of the word racist. Now, me in particular, I would never, I personally wouldn't label the most high anything. But in my opinion, it was done in order to have the dialogue. Because the, the way that the most high moved made you, should make you understand that his favor towards his chosen is far super su supersedes any of that of of all his creations and also the other the other topic is is jesus the most high god so let's go ahead and take a look at this fair use fair use fair use i just mm. wanted to you know what i'm saying yeah uh we can certainly talk about that i was more um interested in having a continuation of the discussion that jp and i had a couple weeks ago peace um mm. brother i believe your name is aubrey and uh brother radar by the way yeah, hey, really, peace, yeah. nice to meet you, man. Yeah, nice All right. Well, before we have that con uh, continuation conversation about mm -hmm. God being a racist or what have you, mm -hmm. um, before we go there, uh, MTM did have a, a question. So if you don't want to really um, address that, um, I'll put you backstage for a little bit, and then um, when you're, well, when I'll, you're let, ready, I'll let um, I'll let Aubrey, I guess, if he wants to kind of answer. I think my position was clear. Okay. So all right, cool. So I guess. Um, you can yeah, so if, we, if we can pull that up again, it just says exactly. that which is from the beginning. It doesn't mean that he had a beginning. I, I don't see how anyone could, you know, uh, get an understanding that, oh, this means that the word had a beginning. Literally talking about the word of life. Mm -hmm. um, it says that which was that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we seen with our eyes, we which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Now, obviously, the word, when we go back to John 1, it literally says that he was in the beginning with God, mm -hmm. was there in the beginning. Not that he had a beginning. Matter of fact, it says that everything that was made was made through him. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, Christians continue to have a stumbling block in front of them as it pertains to John 1 and 1. Uh, first and foremost, the Bible does not begin with John 1 and 1. And to me, it's insane to believe that the Lord's chosen, who are the Israelites, the notion that they would have to go thousands and thousands of years without knowing who God was. And that it would require an apostle named John in the time of Christ to explain it to him in the time of Christ. When the Lord that they know, the Lord that they got introduced to, continuously identified himself as the Lord who brought you out of the hands of the Egyptians. I think if anybody knows who God is, who the Most High is, it would be the Israelites. It wouldn't require Gentile Christian believers to superimpose their belief system of what John 1 and 1 says 
and that now you have to believe what they believe or you're going to somehow go to hell when they're the ones getting it wrong. That's the pride that you're going to get when you're dealing with Christian apologists in the Christian church as it is. So let's just go through it because John 1 and 1 through 3, that's not the only book in scriptures that's in the Bible. You got many books that came before the apostle of John. You got many prophets who heard from the Lord himself because it's not like the Lord never talked about creation. He's spoken on creating it at least 70 times in the Old Testament. But they don't know the Bible. That's the problem. Christians are the proudest people you'll ever meet on the earth. So this is John 1 and 1. It says, in the beginning was the word. Key word, beginning. And the word was with God. And the word was God. It was with God and was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So once again, twice it says it was with God, meaning there's another entity that was there with the word. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Based on these three scriptures, they say Christ is God and that he created everything. Okay. But John is not the only book of the New Testament as it pertains to creation. OK, number one, let's look at this unpack this. The key word there is beginning. In order to have a beginning. You have to have the concept of time. Without time, there is no beginning. Without time, there is no end. What happens if you don't even have time? That's what we need to unpack And the Christian finite mind cannot unpack the unfathomable living power, the most high God, Yahweh. They can't get it because they have not submitted unto him. Even though Christ submitted unto him, they ignore Christ's own ministry. OK, in order to have a beginning, you have to have time. You cannot even have time unless you have a night or a day, darkness and light, sun and moon. Those things were created in the beginning. So all John is saying is in the beginning, when those things were created, Christ was there. That's all he's saying. But the living power, the one, the highest, the father, he exists outside of the concept of time. And when he created Christ, there is no born on date you can put on that creation. That's why it says Christ, his uh, beginnings was from everlasting. Because without the concept of time, how do you classify everlasting? What are you going to do? What month can you give it? What day can you give it? What year can you give it? There's no concept of time. So all it's saying is that in the time where there was a beginning, when the concept of day and night, where you can actually track time, before all that, Christ was there. That's all it's saying. The Bible's not becoming brand new in John 1 and 1. Okay? So let's go to another part of the New Testament, which further clarifies this in the New Testament. Because this is not the only place in the Bible where it talks about creation. Genesis is not the only place in the Bible where it talks about creation and who, who did the creating. So if you just cherry pick, it becomes doctrine. And those who oppose, see, Christianity, y'all have all the numbers. And those who oppose it, they, be, they are the ones that are called the heretics. But y'all are blaspheming. Make that make sense. So this is Hebrews 1 and 1. And it says, God, who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. There's a father, there's a son. A father is never on a son's level. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, 
whom he, God, appointed the heir of all things. God made him heir. Just like a king makes a prince heir. Who he has made heir of all things. Listen to this part. By whom he, God, made the world. It's literally telling you that God made the worlds through his son. So the, the concept that Christ just made everything like he's moving on his own accord, you're not even listening to Christ. Because he said in John 5, I can do nothing of my own. All of the heavenly hosts know they get their power and authority from the one, the highest, the living power, the everlasting the everlasting power, the holy and mighty one. It's only these Christians that can't get it. So let me go to just one area of the Old Testament where it highlights creation. I'll go to a psalm because I can go to many parts of the prophets, but that's too easy. I done done that too many times on other videos. So this is Psalms 104, starting at one. It says, bless the Lord, Yahweh, O my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messenger winds. His ministers flame of fire. He set the earth on his foundation so that it should never be moved you cover it you covered it with the deep as with the garment the water stood above the mountains at your rebuke they fled at the sound of your thunder they took to flight the mountains rose the valley sank down to the place you appointed for them you appointed it the lord the highest you set the boundary that they may not pass so that they might not again cover the earth. The water obeys the Lord the highest. The air obeys the Lord the highest. But these stepping, fetching, prideful Christians, they don't give all honor, praises, and glory unto the power. It is what it is. And you can read all the way down. Um, it goes on and on. I can drop to 14. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants and for man to cultivate that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine and bread to strengthen man's heart. Trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has her home in the fir trees, the high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are for the refuge of the rock badgers. He made the moon to mark seasons and the suns to know it's setting for time. You make the darkness and it is night when all the beasts of the forest creep about. The Lord the highest is the creator of all things. It doesn't matter who else was there. Christ never makes mention of being the creator of all things. Never. He never makes mention of being a part of a trinity. Okay, so let's move on. All right, but uh, go Radar. ahead, ask, ask your question. Let's see what the question so, is. Brother Radar, if a banking institution, no matter what their income or credit score was, never charged white people loans on an int uh, loans on a uh, sorry interest on loans, but to black people, regardless of their uh, income, regardless of their credit score, they could give high interest loans, 20%, 50%, 100% loans. Would that be discrimination based on their ethnic background? Are you using this to make an argumentation of what God's like? I'm just asking a question. Brother, that's good old capitalism. If a bank does that, create our own bank and offer them in lesser rates. That's Brother, capitalism. I asked, I asked a very question, though. I asked, is, is, it, is, is that it racist? No, I don't think that's I didn't racist. Ask if it's racist. I asked if it's discrimination based on their ethnic heritage. I would say that it's equal discrimination because in the United States of America, I have a right to open yeah. up a bank so, that counter so, arguments that. Gotcha. So, mm -hmm. Brother JP, do you agree? So you agree it's it's discrimination, whether it's equal or unequal. I don't. Yeah, I, I would say that it's it's right. it's a preferential treatment to a particular group of gotcha. people. But other people have that same capacity to do that understood. for others. Understood. So, Radar, do you agree then that it's discrimination? 
Well, I think if somebody's treating one person based just upon the color of their skin, that would be discrimination, which that's why I'm glad that the God well, of Israel doesn't do that. I'm talking about their ethnic heritage, because like, for example, an, an, an albino black person is not the same skin color, but they're still a part of the same ethnicity, right? Well, I think technically, yeah, but based upon the color of the skin or even someone's ethnic group, God is not yeah. discriminating against people based upon their ethnic group. It's always Perfect. been a based upon behavior. So, but given the scenario that I just laid out, that would be an example of somebody discriminating or an institution discriminating based on someone's ethnic heritage, do you, right? Do you think God is a bank? It's not about whether I think God is a bank. I'm laying a premise. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, you're laying a premise for a bank about God. How about we talk about scripture and God and what We're God about does? To promise. So, so we I can, we to, can I do that. To, I just need to understand what your answer is. Oh, so yeah, I think, I think for sure it would be discrimination for sure, 100%. But gotcha. you got to let me answer you, right? Okay. You got to, but you're making, but well, let me answer you though. All right, let me mm -hmm. give you my answer. This is the mistake that a lot of Unitarian heretics make and people who try to say that Jesus was created is because they look at the created order of things and they try to retroject that onto the God of Israel. And this is. So there you have it. All the um, all that Hassan was doing, you can tell, you can see that he's being sincere. He's not being belligerent. He's not using any expletives. He's not calling any names. He just asks a simple question. If a bank can charge a lower interest rate on for certain people, but they see another people of a different nationality and regardless of their credit score, the, the amount of money they, they can accrue, the amount of credit that they have, they can give them excess interest just simply because they're of a nation that they don't necessarily prefer. Is that racist or is that discrimination based on their ethnicity? And just that alone, you can't, they just can't even be honest. You know what I'm saying? In any other situation, they would be like, yeah, that's discrimination. But they're so worried about what's going to come after it that they got to sugarcoat their answer. To, you know what I'm saying? And not be honest. Then you got Rabbi Radar who continuously lies on the scripture. He calls Caleb an Edomite when the book of Numbers tells you he's of the tribe of Judah. No, no, no. That's not good enough for Rabbi Radar. His philosophy supersedes Torah. <laughs> oh, man. So now we're going to let the scriptures do all the cutting because I, I, I'm, I'm done with all the talking. We're going to let the law of Moses show them that the Lord favored Israel over everybody. Didn't matter. They were the chosen above everybody. And Moses wasn't up there writing his own commandments. He could have wrote them. He didn't have to go up the mountain to write them. He could have wrote them on the ground. The Lord, the highest, is the one who controls everything. They never been acquainted with him, though. So this is Deuteronomy 23, 19. It says, do not charge interest on loans that you make with a fellow Israelite, whether you loan money or food or anything else. You may charge interest to foreigners, but you may not charge interest to Israelites so that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you do in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Is, there, is that out of context? Isn't that clear? That sounds very clear to me. Let's go to another one. Let's see if the Lord does make a difference between the heathen and his chosen. This is Deuteronomy 14, 21. It says, you must not eat anything that has died a natural death. You may give it to a foreigner living in your town, or you may sell it to a stranger. But do not eat it yourselves, for you are set apart as holy to the Lord your God. You are set apart. You're different. You're the one that I chose. You're mine. In order to be mine, you got to be subject to different rules. My rules don't apply to them because I didn't choose them. You're the one that my glory is going to be set upon. Doesn't it make, don't that make sense? Doesn't that sound clear? But see, when you're coming from a place of philosophy and trying to put the Lord the highest on a human page of what they think the Lord should be, it's always going to be problems. And that guy, Rabbi uh, Radar, 
He don't know the Bible, man. He doesn't know Torah or the prophets. Now, granted, he does speak Hebrew. I think he even speaks a little Greek. But guess what? Even in the time of Christ, every, um, a lot of people were multilingual. There was plenty of Hebrew speaking people that didn't know a damn thing, couldn't figure out anything as it pertains to the Lord's word. That's why the Pharisees were able to confound them. They spoke the Hebrew. But see, the Lord, the highest has to put his spirit on you. And brother Radar, you ain't got it. Point blank and period. Another thing. A lot of people didn't just know the Hebrew. They know the Arama uh, Aramaic language. They knew Latin. They knew Greek. Latin was a language of Franco. Rome was in rulership. And before that, Greece. Knowing multiple languages don't mean the Lord put his spirit on you. But see, that's intimidating to those who fear the fact that you can understand this modern Hebrew that we have. That don't uh, the Israelites, we're not afraid of you. No, don't nobody know these scriptures better than us. And it's clear. So this is Exodus 19, starting at verse five. And it says, now, therefore, if you will obey my voice, indeed, keep my covenant, then ye, the Israelites, shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for the all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Can anybody show me a heathen priest in the Bible? But I thought everybody could be a part of the covenant if they just believe and join themselves unto the Israelites. What you have right there is what they call a bold face lie. And that lie came right from Rabbi Radar. I thought Christ said, call no man Rabbi. I'm right. I'm Rabbi. That's how you start to undress a false teacher and expose him for what he is. Now, granted, he is an Israelite. He thinks he's a Jew according to his mama, but his mom is a false Jew. She's not a real Jew. You know, the lineage does not go through the, line, uh, uh, the natural lineage line like the Jewish people say, like the small hats say. The Bible does not make any, any reference to that. That's how we know it's not them. That's one of the many reasons we know it's not them. But he actually is Israelite through his daddy. But when he goes to the Lord the highest and go down on his face and bow to the Lord the highest, the father, and ask for revelation, I think he'd be amazed what he may get if the Lord chooses him. Because you see, many are called, but few are chosen. Do I got time for one more precept or do I want to see one more? Mm. let's get one more deuteronomy 26 18 and today the lord has proclaimed that you the israelites are his people his treasured possession as he promised that you are to keep his commandments that he will set you high in praise and name and honor above all the nations he has made and that you will be holy people to the Lord your God as he has promised. So regardless if there were servants in the land, even in the time where they were at Sinai, the Lord was very specific as it pertains to who his covenants were for. So you can't just Throw your assertions onto the Torah. The Torah is supposed to minister to you, not vice versa. But this is the man y'all said, you know, is a rabbi. This is the man that says Joshua was from the tribe of Manasseh and Caleb was an Edomite. This is the guy y'all steam, but go off. Answered it. Right. Then you gave another question and another definition. I've got to be able to ask you a question, don't absolutely. I? Absolutely. You absolutely can. That'll be fair. Yes, it would be. Thank but you, you, so much. you really wanted to go to the Bible. So I just read this verse and I wanted yeah, to ask. Okay. You. So, and brother, you, you gave a question, you read a definition, then you made a statement. Yeah. I answered your question. Respectfully, you've got to answer mine. Okay. After I got no problem answering your questions, but can we yeah. continue reading after I answer your question? Yeah, we can. So we we can as long as we go back and forth respectfully. So cool. you had right. yours. May can, I, may a non -American, can a non-American vote? Can a non-American vote? Yeah. No. No. Is that is that racist? No, because whether anybody uh, hold on, at this second, can be an I American, may. no. So that's not even relevant at all. Okay. So, okay, so here's the whole thing. How does someone become part of America? 
there's various things, various ways they can be part of America. They okay. can be born in America. They can be get American citizenship. None they can less, be naturalized. Be, right. But they that can has be naturalized. To do with what I'm asking though, brother. So you would, have to prove, you would have to prove, hold on for a second. See, you would have to prove that is being an Israelite is ethnicity because it's not. Mm, okay. It starts originally with a family, but people from outside of that family had joined it also. So what started the Israelite family? Uh, what started okay. it? What was the oh, beginning remember of Remember you said that we're going to be able to go back and forth? Yeah, we're going back and forth. So you well, drove no, home. You, you asked me, me drive questions line. and I just answered what them. Started, so go yeah, me what, started, what started the Israelite family? This is my. Okay. This is my, what so I'm trying again, to drive. You read a whole definition. Are you able to ask my questions or not, brother? You're able to ask your question, but I'm still driving for a little bit. Then you got it. What started the Israelite family? What do you mean, what started the Israelite family? That's a loaded question. How did they start as a nation? What what was their inception? What was their origin? Why were they chosen? Were they chosen because God was looking around? He said, oh, that's the perfect shade of brown. I got to get me one of those. And never brought up skin color. So this is a complete non -secular. Okay. So, it has absolutely so, nothing to do with my logic. So, my, it has, my as, so who are the Israelites? Again, this has absolutely nothing who to do with the Israelites. About. It has so, everything to do with it. As Where do, we are, are black and Hispanic people are the Israelites. Okay, now black can I ask Hispanic can I get my is black, is black no? nationality? Black is, is a term nationality that was put on us by Europeans. Why do you use it? That, Why do you use it? Brother, because that's what most people that are watching this are familiar with. Now, can I ask my, can I have my questions answered now? So you're willing to be inaccurate in order to appease people's understanding instead no, of educating I'm people? Willing, I'm willing to use terms that most people are familiar with that are watching this broadcast. I don't even understand the the how ridiculous that question is so again can it's we get ridiculous. back to i want to know how they how did the israelites start as a nation brother can we get back to my question it's like you, i agree i already agreed to the because you was really harping on we got to be able to go back back and forth peacefully and i'm like okay no problem i've answered five or six of your questions in a row so if you've ever paid attention to rabbi radar this is what he does the man likes to be in control i'll give him that he is a debater and to be a debater you have to uh, be able to grab control of the situation. He has excellent control, but he don't like answering questions. He don't answer them. He likes to pose them and he will pose them quick. You answer one, he asks another one. You don't answer one, he'll ask two more. That's just the way he is. This is the same man that said that Caleb was an Edomite. When Caleb is one of the valiant men, you're supposed to remember through the annals of time if you are an Israelite. There is no way that the Lord, the highest made an Edomite, a prince of Judah. But this is double talking Christians. OK, so the first thing he said is that. Um, why, you know, how did it start? How did the covenant start? Well, we all know that the covenant began through faithful Abraham. You're not teaching us. There is no part of this Bible that you can go to that we are not prepared to deal with. You know what I'm saying? But the covenant was extended through the loins of Abraham, not through everybody who was around Abraham. Okay. Now, granted, one of the tenants was for him to circumcise everybody that's in his house. It did not say the covenant belongs to everybody that's in his house. Okay. So, um, he says that the covenant would, it started as a family and then various members just joined unto the, unto, unto the lineage. Again, you can't prove this. This is another Christian assertion. Heathens have always been around them where they were in service or they served in the army in protection of the Israelites. It did not make them Israelites. Here's an example. Uh, David's sister, Zariah, who wasn't his sister by blood, number one. Number two, she had three sons. Those three sons were not by an Israelite man. Those three sons were Joab, Abishai, and Azrael. Show me anywhere in the Bible, not in the Strong's Concordance, because a strong concordance may say they're Israelites, but the Bible doesn't. So that's just giving credence to the people that's compiling um, the lexicon as it pertains to what words mean. Okay? That don't mean they have the spirit of the Lord. It don't mean that they understand the Bible itself. All right? Now, Joab, when you go to Kings, 1 Kings 1 and 7, how did they describe him? Did they give him 
a clan name like Ephratite. That was David's clan of the line of Judah. What was Joab's clan's name? What was his tribal name? Does it say anywhere in the Bible? Does it say it? No, it doesn't. That's how you know that the heathen, whether they join unto the family of the Israelites or not, they weren't considered an Israelite. Okay, what about Abishai? He was another one in, in, in the army of Israel. When you read 1 Samuel 26 and 6, it says the son of Zer Zariah. Of course, I'm not saying the name right. I'm sorry, I don't speak the Yiddish, uh, Yiddish uh, Hebrew. I'm sorry, I don't speak the Hebrew like you do. Okay? But he wasn't reckoned as a Judite. He didn't have a clan name. Neither did, I, neither did Azrael, the third son. Neither of them had an inheritance in Judah. So they don't have a tribal name. They don't have a clan name. And they don't have an inheritance. But somehow they're in the covenant. Even Isn't part of the covenant receiving an inheritance of land? You're a double talker and you don't know what's going on in Torah. And that's abundantly clear. So the reason why they are even mentioned in the Chronicles, in the registry, is because they blessed Israel according to the covenant made with Abraham. I will bless them that bless thee, curse them that curse thee. They fought in the army. They fought in the army of Israel, whether they were fighting on in David's army or fighting in Saul's army. A Benjamite or a Judite, they were doing their lot as it pertains to the tenets of the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham. It did not make them Israelites. So, uh, as you can see, he's going to continue just adding to the scriptures, philosophizing, asking questions, and not answering a damn thing. Okay, I'm like, okay no problem. I've answered five or six of your questions in a row. Three. You answered three. Go ahead, brother. Okay, right, you got it. So in Deuteronomy 23 and 19, when it says, thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, when it says thou and the brother, who's the thou that is not allowed to lend upon usury and who's the brother that they're not allowed to lend usury? What verse are you? 23 what? I want to pull 19. it up. 23 and 19. Yeah. All right. It says, you are not to charge interest to your countrymen, interest on money, food or anything. Yeah. So those people who are part of the thing that God started with Abraham which wasn't based upon a particular ethnic group. Rather, he chose the people. He chose him. And why did God choose Abraham? He chose him because he believed in God and he credited him righteousness. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, if people believe and repent, they become part of God's family. Gotcha. So one who is your countryman is one who becomes part of the family by believing. And Korach, even though he was an Israelite, when he rejected God's, the God sent redeemer, Moses, the earth swallowed him up by the ground, him and all of his people. The same way, if nowadays you reject the true God sent redeemer, it's going to swallow you up as well, Hassad. Got you. So as you can see, once again, Rabbi Radar just reach through the crevices and through the deepest part of his ass crack and pull that answer out. It was a very simple question as it pertains to the law. Deuteronomy 23 and 19. He just made up a story and said it pertains to those of the people who are with Abraham. That's insane that you would even say that. This law is a part of the Mosaic law, which he gave to the children of Israel. That's who it pertains to. You're not stupid. Why even make up a story and lie like that? Just more assertions, man. So here's the problem with that uh, premise as it pertains to Deuteronomy 23. The people who resided in Abraham's house at this time that this commandment was given, they were they were dead. Abraham himself, dead. Isaac, dead. Jacob, dead. How did this pertain to the people who existed at that time when the covenant was made with Abraham? The covenant was extended at Sinai and it was given by a law. See, you don't even understand Paul. You don't even understand Paul. Paul explained this. 
Paul says if a covenant is made by a man, it can it is made unto a man. It cannot be annulled or modified. What Paul is saying right there is that the covenant that God made with Abraham is an everlasting covenant, and it wasn't based on keeping the Mosaic law. Abraham already observed uh, the uh, the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments, but that wasn't the tenets of the of the covenant. The tenets of the co the covenant with Abraham is because Abraham listened to the Lord and believed and had faith, and as a result, the Lord said, "I was going to be a God unto him." and to his descendants and he would rule over those descendants and be their god forever up to a thousand generations okay that is literally the only reason why a new covenant was made because the old covenant the one right here is sinai that one got broken because of their disobedience according to deuteronomy 28 these guys should have been destroyed but if the lord destroys them that means he would be breaking the covenant he made with his friend Abraham because his, the covenant with his friend Abraham, again, is an everlasting covenant. That means there is no end to it. So because of that, they still get all the promises. They still get heaven. They still get the kingdom because of the Lord's covenant with Abraham. But this, Deuteronomy 23, is a tenet of the law that was given to them at Sinai, and it was for the Israelites. Nice try trying to assert Abraham onto this. So this is Deuteronomy 23, 19. This is what was being read that he just, just completely ran from. What does Korah, what does the story of Korah, the Levite, in Numbers chapter 16 have to do with this question. I mean, you just reached for anything to see if it would throw it and see if it would stick. But you're not dealing with regular Christians, bro. You're dealing with people who understand this text, who has been given the spirit to decode this, to, to see for you for the fraud that you are. This is Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 23, 19. Do, thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, Usury of money, money, usury of victuals, that's food, usury of anything that is lent upon usury, that's interest, interest on food, money, anything that they borrow. Verse 20, but unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury. You can exact interest on these heathens, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury. You can't charge interest on your brother. You got to do it out of your heart because that's your brother. He is mine just like you are mine. That's all the Lord is saying here. That the Lord thy God might may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to, to do in the land where thou goest to, to possess it. This has nothing to do with people trying to join unto the covenant as it pertains to Abraham. This has everything to do with the covenant made at Sinai between the Lord the highest and the Israelites through his servant Moses. Y'all like to exclude Moses out of this. Moses is one of the most important people in this book. The Lord the highest said he spoke to Moses as one speaks to a friend. Y'all act like he is a non-factor in any of this. When Christ himself is a prophet like unto Moses. According to the scripture, you don't know the Bible. So let's make sure I show you that the Lord do put a difference between the Israelites and those who join themselves unto them in service, might I add, not as a joint heir. This is Leviticus 20, 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have severed you from other people that ye shall be mine. He didn't say that you and whoever joins himself unto you who want to be a party, who want to be down who cleaves onto you or you and your servants. I've severed you from the nations. You're going to be my peculiar treasure above everybody. How many times the Lord got to say it, Rabbi? How many times he got to say it, man? The scriptures are clear. Stop superimposing your belief system onto the Lord. The highest, you're not God. Cool. So in verse 20, then, when it says unto a stranger, Thou mayest lend upon usury. Who's the stranger right here? Yeah. 
Well, what caused somebody to not be a stranger? I'm asking you a question, brother. I'm asking you a question. The stranger are the ones who aren't so in the covenant. Minute. Okay, so read, say it one more time. The stranger is not the one who's in a covenant, but how does someone get into a covenant? Who did God make the covenant with? He made a covenant with Abraham. Okay. And, because Abraham and believed it, God and he credits gotcha. him as okay. righteous. Abraham, he didn't say, man, that's my, that's my flavor of brown right there, it, man. I got to get again, me one of those. Bringing up color has what happened. Was it made with only Abraham okay. or was it made with Abraham? Who were the Israelites? Who were the Israelites? Again, was it made with only Abraham or his physical posterity as well? Why, why were his Israelites originally called themselves black Hebrew Israelites? Has nothing it's not about to do color. what we're talking about at all whatsoever. Who's Judah? Who's has Judah? Has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Who Judah is has no. Judah could be the Kryptonians on Mars or whatever. That's not has no you're relevance. Because you're saying it's not. you're saying it's not about color. Can a white person be an Israelite? This has brother. Can we have like a serious conversation here? This, this has is a serious conversation, brother. About. I want to know who Judah is. It's not relevant. Because, you're running because you're saying it's not about color, but I think it is about color. You can think whatever. How do we know? Brother, you, you is, can, let's say they're the, they're the green people in the middle of the Earth. Who cares? I'm not talking so, about. That. Who's Esau? It doesn't matter who Esau is, bro. Why are you running? It matters if we're talking. I'm not running. If we're talking about running. racism, You're we got to talk about Esau, who's who. It doesn't matter, bro. Yeah, who's Esau? Conversation? Who's Esau? If Esau is the white man, then everybody else who's not white is Israelites. Therefore, you think being an Israelite what? is based upon not being white. You're Again, you're now... Um, that's my perspective, man. I understand. Okay, cool. That's your perspective. I think it's silly, but that's fine. Anyway, in Drummond 23 and 20, when you said the strange right here is uh, what you said it's somebody that's not in the covenant it's Did somebody god... outside who's not in the covenant beautiful okay and so god the covenant... creates a covenant based upon belief cool so god's covenant was made with abraham and his physical posterity yes or no yeah because abraham believed oh, okay okay perfect because abraham believed cool i'll concede to that no problem so the covenant cool. was made with abraham and his physical notice i said physical posterity that would include not just Isaac... his, not just physical well, i just not now just you're physical. changing so now you're changing no that. No, no. I Look at what we got yes here. Yes or no? If it was physical posterity, you said yes. The it, the Bible says that Abraham in Genesis twelve five gathers souls in Haran, and these non Israelites also got circumcised, meaning that they were part of the covenant as well, and they weren't part of Israel. Okay, they weren't part of Abraham. Got you. Okay, so I'm so trying isn't to circumcision sure. isn't circumcision a mark of the covenant? We're not talking about Genesis chapter seventeen. I'm asking you a question about the Is covenant that was made. Genesis We're twelve. About... Genesis twelve. Well, okay, got you. No, my bad. We're talking about the covenant that was made with Abraham that then went to Isaac that then went to Jacob. Yeah. What's the sign of the covenant? Circumcision is cool. A sign of the covenant. Cool. But that's not. Did Abraham that is, circumcise that is non Jews, covenant, non Israelites? Is, is, the, is circumcision the covenant or a sign of the covenant? I literally said is is a sign of the covenant. Perfect. So it's a sign so you, of the covenant. So, so and did, covenant. did non did non did non the people who did not come from Abraham's body get circumcised? Yep. Okay, so non-Israelites received the mark of the covenant that was given to Abraham and his seed. That proves that non-Israelites can be part of, part of God's covenant and become part no, of God's people. No, it doesn't. And, and how we know it doesn't is because when you, again, reading Deuteronomy 23, when it says unto a stranger, it's juxtaposing this stranger, Nikar. This is, when you look at it, it's other times translated as heathen. Non there's a so once again, you see his failure to address any of the questions. He does have full control, though, because for whatever reason, one of the rare times you've ever seen Hassad not in control of what's going on, um, this seasoned debater, Rabbi Radar, is in full control, and he's not answering the questions. He's And he's asking questions and giving his false premise and forcing... Basically, Hassad, the one who's supposed Hassad, Hassad, the one who's supposed to be asking the questions, ba making him be the one to answer the questions, which he is. But Rabbi Radar is not answering anything, and he continues to show his failure in understanding the Lord's covenants. So this guy says, based on Ju Genesis twelve and five, that everybody who got who who got circumcised received the covenant. That's a lie. Abraham's servants got circumcised. It does not mean that the covenant was extended with the product of their loins. You know how, how insane that sounds. How is he the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but yet their servants are part of the covenant? Why not mention the servants' names? That's how stupid that ideology is. Part of the tenets of the covenant is that everybody that's within his house has to be circumcised. 
That means everybody who was a part of Abraham, except for women, had to have the token of the covenant on them because they were joined unto Abraham to bless him. So that's the that's their only way of being part of it. They had to obey the Lord the highest. It does not mean his covenant was with them. And even when you get to the New Testament, Paul even says that simply because you're of the seed of Abraham, you are not all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. How come he didn't say, but in the servants? But in the servants thy seed shall be called. So that means it don't matter if you got circumcised in the time of Abraham. If you did not go through the line of Isaac, the covenant is not yours. There is only one lot as it pertains to the heathens. Their lot is to bless the people the Lord chose. That's what you don't get, boy. You don't have the spirit of the Lord on you. You don't understand him. You're trying to give the Lord counsel on what you think his covenant should be. You're just not reading the scriptures and be like, and be like okay, you're supposed to read the scriptures and let the scriptures minister to you, not vice versa. You're not a rabbi. You're an imposter. Romans 9 and 7 says, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of promise shall be counted for the seed. That means all the people that were a part of Abraham's house who were circumcised, Ishmael, Esau, Midian, Midan, Shua, Ishbak, these are children of the flesh. Yes, they come through his loins. But these are not the children of the promise because in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, how wonderful is that? You have a real Israelite to break down the Lord's covenant for you. Take the correction, brother. It only hurt a little bit. So this eliminates the theory that Abraham's servants are part of the covenant. It, it eliminates Ishmaelites. It eliminates Midianites, Amalekites, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, the children of Lot. It eliminates that. Your Lord and Savior Paul told you that, and you didn't even listen to that because you think you're on some level. So let's take it to Genesis. This is Genesis 17, which Hassan so eloquently brought up, but you didn't even you didn't even realize you probably should have backtracked your statements because you don't even know Genesis. Starting at verse 1, 17, Genesis. When Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto Abraham, Abram, and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. Listen closely, Rabbi Radar, because you think you know, you don't know. You're, no, you're on no level. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with your servants. No, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy, thy name be any more called Abram, but thou shalt be called Abraham for a father of many nations. Have I made thee and I will mold, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. There they did. Kings of different nations came out of them. And I will establish my covenant with everybody in your house. No, I will establish my covenant. That's what Rab Rabbi was talking about. Who the covenant for? With me and thee and thy seed. What does seed mean, Rabbi Radar? Uh, I believe that means sperm. That means the product of your loins, not of your servant's loins. See, the Gentiles, the heathens, their only lot was to bless the chosen people. That's how they get blessed. Nothing more, nothing less. No joint heirs, none of that. Bless the children of Israel. Bless Abraham. Bless Isaac. That's their lot. I will establish my covenant between me and thy seed after thee. That means it's a physical lineage through the man because the man has the seed it lives it swims not an egg 
and their generations for an everlasting covenant. That means there's no expiration date. To be a God unto thee and thy seed after thee, not servants. So let's back that statement. Let's see what Ishmael's lot was, because Ishmael was circumcised, right, Rabbi Radar? Verse 20, as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. What a blessing. What a blessing. Verse 21, but my covenant. Oh, oh. oh. Oh, oh, who the covenant for, Rabbi Ray? Oh, who the covenant for? Everybody, right? Their behavior. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. Oh, that is a dagger to the heart. You're on no level, brother. You're no rabbi to us. The only rabbi we know of is Shai. period. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this time in the next year you are cut so let's get another precept that backs this since rabbi radar wants to bring philosophy you notice he's not bringing no scriptures to the forefront he's not reading anything he's just asserting himself as the teacher you're no teacher brother you're no teacher you're a buffoon you're a buffoon and i'm not repenting on that now because you're doubling down on stupidity and you got a bunch of people listening to it. Psalms uh, 104, starting at verse 4. Seek Yahweh, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he had done, his wonders, the judgments of his mouth. O oh, ye seed, no, O oh, ye servants. No, oh, you heathens who gathered unto Abraham. You see how the scriptures minister to us? All you got to do is read them. It don't take much to get on God's page. You want God on your page. Lord, don't fit on one page. There's not even a building you can make for him. The earth is barely sufficient for his feet, but you think you can give the Lord counsel. Huh. And the judgments of his mouth, O oh, ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. No, the servants. No, the servants of Jacob. No, the people that join themselves unto them. How come they're not mentioned? He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He had remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. There still hasn't even been a thousand generations since that time. Which covenant he made with Abraham, with Abraham, uh-huh. What else? And his oath unto Isaac, no, unto Ishmael. No, unto Midian. No, to Ishbak and Shua. Rabbi, where you at? His oath unto Isaac. And confirm the same unto Jacob. This sounds like a physical lineage as it pertains to the Lord's covenant. Not a spiritual, not a behavior. And confirm the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. That means the covenant that was given to Abraham is given unto the Israelites forever. So if heathens are going to be grafted in like they say they are you need to know who the israelites are because if you think you're just going to graft yourself in and you're not going to take heed and bless the children who the lord himself chose you're not grafted in and you won't be grafted in when the appearance happens you will receive the sword because that's your lot this is an oppressed people on the four corners of the earth who don't know who they are. And you're trying to take their covenant. Uh, 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 uh. But go off. Go ahead. Right, so if Donald Trump, Brother uh, Eduardo, if Donald Trump was to say uh, race A is allowed to enslave race B forever and perpetually, but they are never allowed to enslave each other. Yes or no? Is that a racist statement? 
Is Donald Trump your God? Nope. But can you answer the question? No. So don't make the equivocation between I'm Donald Trump and God. I'm asking a question. Are you bro. voting for Donald Trump? Are you voting I'm for Donald Trump? I'm asking a simple question. Are you bro. voting for Kamala Harris? I'm asking you a then question. Don't ask, don't ask me ridiculous questions, Actually, brother. Donald answer, Trump okay, is not no God, problem. my brother. No problem. So Donald Trump is not the God. Is, the answer is clearly yes. So when you go to Leviticus 25 it's, and verse 4. But brother, look, Donald Trump is not God. I understand Therefore, that, he doesn't have infinite knowledge. I started this from the very beginning. From the very beginning. From the very beginning. Can I respond now, brother, please? Thank you. So in Leviticus 25, verse 44, this is God speaking to the Israelites. And he says, both your slave man, sorry, slave men and your bond maids, your slave women, which you shall have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. So God's telling the Israelites, this ethnic group of people, they are allowed to enslave. Verse, other human beings. verse 44 to about 46. It says, huh? of them shall you buy bondmen and bond maids. You can, you can make these financial transactions for other groups of human beings. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall you buy and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. Real quick, that is literally the, the definition of chattel slavery. It's the, the enslaving of one person and treating them as if they are property. That's literally what we're reading right here. Sidebar, verse 46. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brothers, the children of Israel, you shall not rule one over another with rigor. Meaning the Israelites are allowed to enslave other groups of people, other races, other ethnicities, and then pass their children to their children's children's children as a possession. They're buying these people, humans, they're buying them and then treating them as property, but they're never allowed to do that to each other. We all know if white people were to say, you can never enslave another white person, Never. You're never allowed to do that. But you can enslave black people and their babies and their babies, babies forever and treat them as property to be bought and sold, that that would be racist. All of a sudden, we created God doing it. And it just if all logic just the brother God logic just left. All logic must have left the room. Apparently. That was funny. Hold on for a second. All right. Don't need to be dramatic. All right. <laughs> but that was a check good it out. This idea. Yeah, that's pretty good. The idea of these people becoming the property, right? As far as Ahuzad, you know what Ahuzad means? Uh, How it's used in other property places. Just based on what you just said. What's that? Yeah, property also, yeah. but also it's like this idea of of inheritance, right? That God somehow is allowing the nations to be the inheritance because they're staying in the land and not being kicked out, and this is their punishment. It's not like the Lord's perfect design is in order to be having um, non-Israelites become slaves to the people. This is not God's design from the very beginning. Okay. This is not his design, okay? Is this the law of so, God? This is the law of God. Is the law of God but when did the, the law of God is perfect, right? If it's understood rightly. Now, hold on for a second. If you want to talk about the law, I'll debate you on the law. I'll debate you on the deity of God. You could dance all you want, brother, and do your Fortnite moves. But you got to <laughs> understand, brother, if you want to debate all these things, we could do it. Yeah, I have zero sure. issue with doing that, right? Uh -huh. And as you can still see, the absolute failure to answer any of the questions. You know, good and well, good and well, the question had very little to do with Donald Trump or who he's voting for. This is just another bait and switch tactic that they use when they don't want to answer questions because they don't have no answers. And as you can see, as soon as the question was posed, he was like, oh, let me speak Hebrew. My audience is listening. Let me speak a little Hebrew. They can see that I let me further assert my authority over the Holy Scriptures. But yet I'm not going to break down any of it. I'm just going to give you philosophy like I've been doing this whole entire time. Because this guy, Rabbi Radar, is a fraud. Yeah, I said it. Put it in your pipe and smoke it. The man don't break down nothing. Scriptures, line by line, nothing. He's unable to fathom the law, the Psalms, or the prophets, and everything has to do with what Paul says and what he think is being said in the gospel. I heard this man the other day said the Holy Spirit was diminished in Mark 6 and 5. Because Christ didn't do any mighty works there. And the guy he was debating with, Pastor Corey Minor, who was a bug out himself, at least he was right. It's because the faith that was in that town was non-existent. 
And you would know that if you would actually use your cross reference to Matthew. But instead, he borderline blasphemed the Holy Spirit un unknowingly, I'm sure. They don't even know what blasphemy is, which is a filthy, wicked lie. He says the Holy Spirit was minimized in that regard because of his ineffectiveness to move in that situation, as opposed to when Christ healed a little girl a chapter or two prior to Mark 6 and 5. This guy is a fraud, superimpo superimposing his belief system onto the scriptures. The scriptures aren't minister unto him. He's bringing philosophy and private interpretations, and the parishioners are too stupid to see it. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. So, this guy says that uh, in Leviticus 25, um, that Hassad's premise that he's laying is inaccurate, as if Moses is writing this on his own, right? But I'm going to start it off right here at Leviticus 25 and 1, and then I'll go to where Hassad went, which is later on in the chapter. I want to build my premise, because I'm going to show you it's the Lord that's doing the talking. It's not Moses. Moses don't move on his own accord. Nobody does as it pertains to the father, the highest. But you would know that you don't have the spirit on you. So Leviticus 25 and 1 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, So that ought to tell you right there, Moses ain't doing the talking. Moses ain't doing the commanding. It's the Lord telling Moses what to do. So by the time you get down to 44, where Hassan was talking about, you just going to have to deal with the fact that this is the Lord's law. This is the law of the Lord, like it says in Ezra, Nehemiah, and the book of Luke. Deal with it. You go to the Lord the highest and tell him you got a problem with it. So this is Leviticus 25 and 44. It says, both thy bondmen, slave men, and bond made slave women, which thou shalt have. That's the Lord talking. You're going to have them. Shall be of the heathen, the other nations that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bond maid, slave men, slave women. Moreover, the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall you buy. And of their families that are with you, which they begat in, their, in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your slave man forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, the Israelites, Ye shall not rule over one another with rigor. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Tell me that's out of context when I just read it verbatim. I told you, I've told plenty of people on many a times, I will pull out passages in this book that will make you put your belief system in check. It's gut check time. Do you choose the most high or not? But see, the heathen... As in many times before in Israelite history, once they conquered the Israelites, they got their hands on this book. They got their hands on their scrolls. They asserted their dominance over it. They assume the identity of the people that they conquered. It's been happening through the annals of time. White folks ain't, ain't Egyptians. You know what I'm saying? Even in the time of Babylon. The scripts were taken. The temple was destroyed. Israelites were being ruled over. It's been the same thing, same thing this whole time. And if you knew what prophet Jeremiah was prophesying, you would understand why the Lord says, And many kings shall also serve themselves of them. But just like I'm making my Israelites drunk of the cup of fury, that is poured from my hand unto them for disobedience, even so shall you drink it. That's why we know the people who y'all esteem as the Israelites today can't be 
because the Israelites are an oppressed people on the four corners of the earth. Why would they need a Messiah to deliver them? See, y'all think we just decided to wake up one day and just say, oh, we're Israelites. No, we study like a fiend this book to find out who these people are and what our position is. And through the process of meditating and praying and receiving the spirit from the father, we understand that the people y'all say it is can't be it. They don't have slavery in their history. Number two, they're not in the hands of their enemy. Number three, they have nukes and an army and a world superpower is a big homie. That's not scriptural. Number four, they're in the land already. Number five, they say their lineage is matrilineal. Don't make me pull out 10 to 15 reasons why we know. That's why we stand firm and stand stiff in this thing. Even against people like you who try to come against us as if we're the ones that's a buffoon. It's you. You're the buffoon. You don't know this Bible. You don't know these scriptures, bro. You know Christianity. You know Gentile-based Christianity given to you by the heathen. But you're going to learn today. But he spoke about is God a racist for freaking I'm not talking about is God a racist. I wanted to ask Rabbi Eduardo about the Maziza Bapet, his Jewish community, oral circumcising little babies. First right. off, my community doesn't do that, brother. You don't know what you're talking about. Again, okay. can I share my, my doesn't screen? doesn't do that. A Maziza no, don't share your screen. Don't no. share your screen. That's yeah. true. What is your bot, my, my community is your does not do that, bro. Can I All read right. your bot 133 in the middle? All right, well, Deacon, I, do, I follow, you. Do, Deacon, I follow, do I follow the Talmud? Do I follow the Talmud? Yeah, is the look. Talmud part of the text that I follow? It's not what I follow. Listen, I got love for everybody, but if you know the rules are simple, are we under the law? Is God a racist and is Jesus God? We already spoke about God being a racist. Uh, we touched a little on the law. So the topic at hand is is Jesus God? So Deacon, if you wanna if you wanna speak about that, Deacon, the floor is yours. But you know, like circumcision and all that stuff, that's not in the title, unless I'm mistaken, and it is. Can somebody double check? See if I wrote circumcision on the title. It says under the law Not is God all. a racist and is Jesus God. So we good? Everybody on the same page now? Yeah. All right, Deacon, we good? We on the same page? All right, cool. All right, cool. All right, thank okay. you. This guy said, JP, you're a weakling. No, you're a weakling, sir. Stay on topic, <laughs> sir. How about you come in here and show me how I'm a weakling? Come in yeah. here, sir. I'll turn your gray hairs back to black. All right, so come in here, sir. Come in here. Yeah, and 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 uh, no disrespect to Rabbi Eduardo. I never said you believed in that. I said your people. That's all. So um, mean. <laughs> there are plenty of there are plenty of people that believe in all types of stuff and all types of groups. There's there's atrocities happening in the Black and Hispanic community all over the world. I wouldn't try to lump you together with them, right? That would be dishonest and disingenuous. Correct. Okay. Okay. But right? we know you were because, circumcised. Because so we know how it happened because, with you. Look, be, because you're black, am I going to say you're like Diddy? No. <laughs> I mean, listen, I can that see why be, you that wouldn't want to talk. That would be ridiculous, right? Because you, you're a rapper? Because you're a rapper, should I say you're like Diddy? No, no. Did not you get at invited all. to the white party? You throw in not, your own white parties? Not at all. But Diddy didn't write all right. a book. All right. Diddy didn't write okay. a book saying he could okay. already circumcise. Okay. So all right. Talk so about now Jesus. we on. Is Jesus God? Let's talk so about let's Jesus talk about being God. let's talk about let's talk about what's happening in the hip hop community. What's happening, rapper? That, that's fine. Tell us I'm about listening. it. What's rap, going on? Rap you in hip hop? You want to make it as a rapper? You want to go to the Grammy Washington, parties? Washington. You want to get invited I mean, to a white party? Gangster fair, rap not is not cancerous culture, and it is you, counterproductive to our people. You see how quick I condemn that? But he was circumcised yeah. as a baby by a man, so he's feeling some type of way about it. <laughs> you don't so know when I was circumcised or how I was circumcised. You don't know when I was circumcised or how I'm circumcised, oh, right? Oh, wait. So what so I'm saying is... It. So you didn't do it with Hold the on Jewish for government. a second. Hold you on, didn't do brother. It. Chill right, out, come man. Come on, man. I said, is <laughs> Jesus God? Deacon, you're killing me, Smoke. Bring him back. Bring him back. Bring him back. All right, Bring him back. All right. Deacon, come on. You're Listen, killing me, man. You're here's the whole thing. Don't go anywhere. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Hang out, right? You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll send you a hip-hop beat, all right, for you to put a new song out. Check Thank this God, out. I appreciate that. You're we just very want welcome. you guys to stay away from the little yeah, babies. Yeah, but check That's it out. It. But listen, we're away from the little babies, and just Tell like the rappers do to stay away from the little baby. Deacon, you're going to get my channel flag, brother. Chill with that okay, language. well, let's talk right. about Jesus God. He want to keep talking hey, about Mazita Bapet. Now, hold on for a second. Do you recognize, do you recognize, hold on for a second. 
Yeah, no, I'm not mad yeah, about no, no, any no, of this stuff. You guys you never know. Blood oh, oh, off okay, the baby's okay. penis. Yeah, yeah. Yo, chill, Listen, bro. that's wrong, brother. I've, look, okay, I told if it's you it's wrong. Then condemn them for it. He's not an Orthodox Jew. Yeah, of course, one hundred percent, brother. That's one hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. I'm, but I'm not an Orthodox Jew. And what you fail to see is the logic between your false equivocation that's between me people. and rabbinic Judaism. That's if I may people, finish though. my statement, like I just let you finish, are your people the black people? Yes. Would I be wrong for saying that every crime a black person committed is the same exact thing that you've done in history? Yes, that would in your be life. Wrong. Exactly. So you're wrong to say the same thing to me. And you don't even see the logic inside Not of that. Is and the cognitive law. dissonance. My, black people aren't saying killing black people is codified law. The Jewish community is saying it's codified law to orally circumcise somebody. Every out of the, person out of the does not. Yeah, but, but, no, so but, first off, but that's but you're equating me with what the religious Jewish community does, I which is incorrect. You to, I just asked how you felt about it. No, that's How not. You told me to explain it as if I did it and I actually went through it. That's why you have no idea what you are talking about. Okay, so let's. Yo, is this the guy that called me a weakling over here? See. I find it amazing how this dude has just been on Hassan's neck this whole time. You know what I'm saying? Criticizing the Israelites, taking shots here and there. Oh, the Lord thought that was a great shade of brown and like, I'm going to have that for myself. See, you take all those shots at the Israelites, right? And what we believe in our belief system without going through the scriptures, may I add. But see, now Deacon is on there. Priest Haka is on there now. And you can't be petty no more because out of everybody in our community, ain't nobody more pettier than Deacon. So now the moment that the pettiness gets levied back at you. Now you want to act all effeminate. All oh, woe is me. Oh, I can't, I can't stoop to this level. And I'm glad Deacon brought that out. If you're just this super Jew, if you're just on this level, explain why these little babies are getting blowjobs by these small hat people that y'all esteem in your community. Since you got so much ridicule for our community, that you continue to pull out, you call a Hebrew fake. You say Yahweh Shah is not real. The Hebrew ain't real. We just everything is just made up. You sound just like your oppressor. You sound just like your daddy boy. But now you got it. Now you're on the defensive. Explain why babies are getting blowjobs by your the people y'all esteemed. Where in the Torah does it say that's the way you give circumcision? Explain why your community holds fast to doctrines of men as opposed to the written Torah, which is the instruction from the most high, the power. Explain yourself, boy. Since, since you wanted to get petty, you didn't go to the scriptures. You didn't answer no questions. You ridicule our community. Deal with it. That's why Deacon pressed you out and made you, made you uh, go on the defensive. And explain why these dirt bags are doing that. Oh, but him feelings hurt. Him feelings hurt. And he wants to say, woe is me. Oh, Deacon, how could you? Why couldn't you just condemn those rapists? Why you got to go on a defensive? The first thing that came out of your mouth, like, that ain't me. Them people are disgusting. Those are not men of God. Those are rapists. They are raping babies. And no one is putting those dirt bags behind bars. See, this guy is a fraud, man. And you notice that, you know, I, I like JP, but he didn't say anything to Rabbi Radar when he was dissing us, talking about, oh, what, what's next in the rap community and Diddy this. And he didn't say nothing to him about that. He never said that. But the moment the uh, Deacon said something about the small hat community, hey, Deacon, you didn't get my my channel flag. You see how the uneven, the uneven dis distribution of, of being fair? Don't don't let Deacon share his screen. He was just obeying because they, they esteemed this fraud, man. And I don't mean any harm on the brother. I wish he would come back to his nationality and heritage and let that bull go. Because Christianity is finished. Y'all can't defend your doctrine. It's false. The Lord, the highest, is the only true God. And Christ is who he has sent. And the slain of the Lord shall stretch from one end of the earth even to the other. You're selling false dreams and divination. Because as it says in Edris, the world to come is made for few. 
that means the billions of Christians that y'all have, yo, all y'all ain't making it. You're lying. You're lying. It, and the Lord's not taking you because you think you have good behavior. Y'all are willful lawbreakers. So if you have not submitted unto the Father who is the highest as the only true God, as his son already said in his ministry, you think you're going to be a part of the new covenant? You think you're going into the kingdom? Do you not know the uh, Moses, what Moses said about the Lord? He said he quaked with fear in the presence of the Lord. You guys don't fear the Lord. You've never been acquainted with him. You think he's just this lovey-dovey, and he just wants to give everybody in the world a big old warm hug. No, you never, never been acquainted with the Lord the highest. You know what relation yes, really means, does bro. God Does the Father have a God over him? No, no, no. Okay. We believe in the monarchy of the Father as okay. Catholics. The Son has a God over him, though. Sure. And yet he's still the most high. Yes, because it's one essence. So wow. does Yahweh? So does Yahweh have a God? Yahweh have a God? What do you mean by God, though? I mean, like the same. You see how easy it was for you to answer if Jesus has a God or if the Father has a God. I'm asking you in the same capacity: Does Yahweh have a God? So when you say God, do you mean like divine essence? Or I mean in the same way. Okay, for example, again, you were asked is the, if the Father has a God, and you easily, within probably a millisecond, said no. I'm yeah, saying in the same the way that you Father. answered that: Does Yahweh have a God? Yes or no? uh sure if you just mean like if one person of the trinity has a god sure i mean like does Yahweh? so you're saying yahweh does have a god so there's two so gods. yahweh no, yahweh no, no, no. and then the god of yeah yahweh. yeah. so again this is why i asked you and you didn't answer right so nice dodge right ask me so anything. when i when i ask you what god means right and how you're using the word god there's can be two instances it can be either for the persons or the essence so it can be the usia or the hypostasis so you guys want to mention hypostatic union? You know, the name of the philosophy, right? What's, what's the name of the essence? Yeah, Yahweh. Okay, so Yahweh is not a man. Oh, uh, what do you mean by man? Is Yahweh a masculine person? Like you mean man, like me and you? No, no, we don't and mean. The, so, not. so Yahweh, the divine essence, isn't a man. Nobody is, would ever say. Okay, so okay, so why does the Bible say in Exodus fifteen and three that Yahweh is a man? Yeah, so it's just using um, anthropomorphic language. We just use this in like some type of light symmetry. We don't mean it strictly because that would just mean a contradiction. Oh, okay. Well, he's, why is the pronoun to this substance a he? A singular. Yeah, he. so whenever it references a he, it just talks about how God is the alpha, has dominion, and we know that males have dominion over all, especially human males. That's okay. part of so why we Yahweh mean. is not just a substance. It has a masculine spirit. You can use it to describe it, but with an an, an, an uh, analogical sense. You what does the an word analogies? Yahweh mean? What does the word Yahweh mean? And again, it just refers to the divine essence. What is the name mean? of the divine what, essence? What does the what does it mean? Not the definition. What is the I am? No, it doesn't. Does it mean I am? Does it mean Yahweh? What does the Yod yeah. in Yahweh mean? Oh, dude, I don't speak Hebrew, dude. Like I don't know what you're gonna. Okay. Okay. I don't know. He, him. Sure. Why? Why in even in the name it's he it, it says yeah, again because it shows his dominion, right? Why is it he it. singular though? Right, because the essence is one. Okay, so the essence is one, and that essence has a god. That essence has a god, or no? The so it got too hot in the kitchen, and Rabbi Radar tucked his tail and ran. It's all good when he's serving up the heat, but he goes straight uh fraud and part-time bra when the heat is brought in his own direction so now they're talking about is jesus the most high god and these trinitarians believe that if you don't accept the trinity according to their theory of what that means you're going to hell right you're going to hell they think they have the keys to heaven and hell if you don't believe what they believe not what they can show in the scriptures. It's based on their own belief system. You're going to hell. They have the keys. They think they have that power. So let's go to the Messiah himself. Why they want to teach different from his ministry, I do not know. But it's my job to bring out the words of the Messiah himself because he is the one that was elected. To bring all clarity as it pertains to the Lord. The Lord said, I'm going to put my words in his mouth. Right? 
and he shall do all that I command. That in itself should tell you that the Lord the highest is not Jesus, that Jesus obeys, as Jesus said himself. But y'all put caveats on, on Christ's words. So put caveats on this. John 17 and 1, these are the words. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes up to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may also glorify thee. And thou, the father, has given him, Jesus, power over all flesh. Remember we had read earlier in this video in Hebrews how God appointed him heir of all things. Why is Christ saying the same thing? But y'all are saying something different. You're not letting Christ minister to you. You're trying to minister to Christ. You're trying to minister a different gospel than Christ. And said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son may also glorify thee as thou, Father, has given him Christ power over all flesh, that he, Christ, should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So God gave Christ the key to eternal life to give to as many as was given him. That means Trinitarians don't have the keys to eternal life. We don't have to go to you for that. We don't have to accept your belief system. That, that belief system is for the birds. Christ said, I have the keys to eternal life. That's what Christ said in verse 2, that it was given to him by the Father, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him, not given to Trinitarians. Verse 3, now listen closely. And this is life eternal. Like y'all say, if you, if you don't want to go to hell, you need to listen. This is Christ talking, not Trinitarians. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This is Christ letting you know, if you don't believe that the Father, the highest, is the true God, Eternal life is on the line because the greatest commandment as it pertains to, you know, people who are going into the kingdom is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Christ said that's the father. I don't give a damn what they said at that council. Christ was not there. Christ already addressed this. Why do I need a council? That they may know thee, the only true God. Now, let's get another witness on who the true God is. Let's see if they say it's Jesus. Let's see if they say it's a trinity, distinct, uh, substance, divine, together, co-equal. Let's see if any of that is in the text. This is Jeremiah 10 and 10. But Yahweh, the Tetragrammaton, but the Lord is is the true God. Did that say Jesus? Did that say Jesus? See, Jesus said, the Father is the only true God. So when you read Jeremiah 10 and 10, that would make Yahweh the Father. No co-equal. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God. An everlasting king at his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Yahweh is the living God and the living God is the father. Let's get another witness. First Thessalonians chapter one, verse eight. For not only did the message of the Lord ring out from you to Macedonia and uh, Ikea, but your faith in God has gone out to every place so that we have no need to say anything more for they themselves report what kind of welcome you gave us and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. I wonder who that is. Next verse. 
and to await his son. Uh oh, that means the living and true God is the Father. No co equal, no divine nature, no substance, no co equal, no togetherness, no coexisting. It's the Father, and everything obeys him. The Lord our God is one, not co distinct divine nature, substance, all that stuff y'all add to the scriptures. It's not there. That's what we call adding. That's what we call isogeting. That's what we called private interpretations. Oh, you didn't think it was you, huh? Oh, okay. And how you turn to God, the Father, from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his son from heaven. That means the son from heaven is the son of the living God. And the living God is the father. Whom he raised from the dead. Jesus, our deliverer from the coming wrath. So even in heaven, Christ, Yahweh is not acknowledged as the living God. But Christ already said that you didn't believe it. Let's get another witness. And I'm going to probably conclude right here. Let's see what Cephas or Cephas, the rock, Peter, the chief apostle, the chief disciple of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Let's see what he said. This is Matthew 16 and 15. He saith unto them, but whom say, whom say ye that I am? And Peter, Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. That would mean Christ is not the living God. He's the son. That's what the Bible has been saying this whole time. Trinitarians, you need to repent. You've told people they're going to hell if they don't accept your bullshit. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barona. For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, the living God, which is in heaven, is who revealed it to you. The Father who revealed it is the living God. Why didn't Christ say, I am the living God in the flesh? So how do y'all, I just don't understand how you come up with your doctrine instead of just listening to heathens who has assumed themselves a righteous position as it pertains to the scriptures that was not given to them. The Lord's never known them. And y'all try to equate what Greek says. Oh, the Greek this, the Greek this, as it pertains to the God of the Hebrews. Like I said before, the Lord, the highest, has acquainted himself many times in this book that you don't know. I am the Lord God of the Hebrews, Exodus 9 and 1, Exodus 9, 13. Exodus 10, 3, Exodus 5 and 3, Exodus 3, 18, Exodus 7, 16. I am the Lord God that brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the hands of the Egyptians. That's over a thousand times in the Old Testament. Where is co-equal at? Where is it? Show anywhere where it even says Christ brought the, out the Israelites from the hands of the Egyptians. Show it. So I'm going to conclude with Acts 7, 13 with Paul. And it says, the God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. Remember, they're the God. He's the God that led them out of the hands of the Egyptians. Paul acknowledges this. You guys are talking about co-equal, coexistence, divine substance. And with a high arm brought he them out of it, out of the land of the Egyptians. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. He raised up David to be the king of the Israelites. To whom also he gave testimony. That is God. God raised up David and God gave him testimony and said, I have found David, not we. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill, fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God 
according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. Jesus didn't raise unto Israel himself. This was the Lord's work. Jesus is the servant, even by his own mouth. John 13, 16, a servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is the one that is sent greater than he who sent him. John 14, my father is greater than I. How many scriptures do I need to bring out from Christ before y'all realize that the Lord, the highest is the living power only. So these guys don't know the Bible, man. I worship the Lord God of the Hebrews, the living God, the father, the highest, Yahweh, the one who Moses says he quaked with fear in his presence at. The one who says he kills and make alive. He wounds, he heals. The one who forms the light and creates darkness, makes the peace and creates the evil. There is no fear of the Lord with these Christian apologists. There is no fear in the Christian church. They're exceedingly proud, but they know not God. And. Like I said before. If you don't stop with the blasphemy, I will even say it's borderline blasphemy because you are trying to give honor unto the son, but you're minimizing the father. The father says, unto whom shall you make me equal? There is nobody on the level. That's why it's only one on the throne. And all the hosts are around him, worshiping, singing psalms, waiting for commands. The Lord sits on the throne alone and christ will assume the throne of his forefather david there is a order a hierarchy as it pertains to the heavenly realm even paul taught you that in first corinthians 8 which deacon tried to share with y'all but y'all just think everything we tell y'all is just on some dumb level like we just some stupid black hebrew israelites you're gonna learn today and if you don't learn then you're gonna have to deal with the power it is what it is it's not like we're reading anything that we made ourselves you just thought you were the scholar you're not so i'm gonna say to the brothers that's out there to continue pushing the work we're gonna keep stepping on their neck in hopes of awakening the hopeful elect to god be the glory and praise majesty dominion and power all praises unto the living god yahweh the father the highest and we give honor to the Son, who is the mighty arm of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. And with that, I'll say shalom.